Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome to the quarterly report. Good to have you with us today on this bright and sunny afternoon. Hope you all are returned from a, a restful spring break. Hope you had a good time. And so we have a, a number of items uh, to cover with you, a little bit about what's happening at JCC. And uh, also, this is a little bit different than the convocation in that I also allow some Q&A time at the end. So we'll uh, try to structure it in such a way that if you have questions, if you feel like we're going long and you have questions, feel free to stop me. But we'll have a formal period at the end, uh, so feel free to ask questions there as well. So shall we go? Any questions before we get started? I'm going to have to stand over here because this is where the light is and we're filming this for individuals who are, are not with us today. And uh, that will be streamed on video later so people can pick it up and uh, see it uh, at, at their leisure. So... Let's get under, holy cow, legislation. I had to show this video. It's so good. I mean, <laughs> thanks to Amanda for all the good work she, uh, she does in putting these um, PowerPoints together for me. But I wanted to show this nice graphic. It's way cool, Amanda. Thank you. All right, on to legislation. You know, there's a lot happening right now. And uh, I, I know that I come to you and say, you know, it is, it's more difficult. Uh, it's stranger than it's ever been before. And uh, I didn't think anybody could make this kind of stuff up. My father used to say, truth is stranger than fiction. Uh, there's a lot of truth here, which seems fictional to me. It is strange beyond belief. And uh, the fact that you put into the mix, you've also got an election year for a governor and lots of other things, people making uh, decisions about whether to run for office or not. It uh, really creates a inter an interesting cauldron of lots of uh, lots of ideas and perspectives and uh, the way things are being held up, uh, things not moving through uh, particular houses as they should, uh, and differences of opinion. Also, I would say that more than any other time, people are pretty testy. Uh, I think the current economic conditions are such that people are a little, um, and, and rightly so, a little anxious, a little uh, scared, afraid of their future, and, and wondering about a lot of things. So um, I, I try to take all of the stuff that we, uh, that we receive uh, with kind of a grain of salt and understanding that people are, are in a pretty difficult spot. Uh, even uh, today, I uh, had a conference call with Washington getting the latest information, which I'll share with you as we, as we go through. But it, it is a very difficult time. I have no interest in being a legislator. I, you know, uh, thanks be for the people who do that work, but uh, it, is, it is exceedingly difficult. More and more demands on their time and uh, just some interesting stuff that comes as a result. Uh, I'm also seeing the effect of, of term limits and how that affects legislation and uh, legislative planning. And uh, that's concerning to me as well. But let's, uh, let's move through. Let me start on the, uh, the federal side here, first of all. A uh, number of changes happening there. Uh, we're not seeing the, the speed with which some of this activity was going to occur. Uh, I think the Obama administration is being stalled in a couple of different uh, aspects. But some neat, neat things are happening. And one is the, uh, the jobs legislation uh, as that continue to, continues to move forward. Uh, there was um, uh, an interesting renewal. In fact, I was talking with Rebecca about a grant earlier today. Uh, regarding uh, community uh, uh, CBJD funds that we'll be able to apply for. This is probably the last time of being able to get uh, those funds. But in addition, there are some interesting tax elements, uh, tax provisions for both the employee and for the company, wherever training and retraining and capacity building takes place within an organization. Uh, one that I'll mention is uh, on the bottom there, uh, notice the green dot, St. Patty's Day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, thanks to Dennis for this. Uh, the uh, Build America bonds, I want to thank uh, Tom Vayner, who's with us here today. We actually took advantage of the Build America bonds, which came out as part of the, uh, uh, the funding uh, as part of the Obama administration that allowed us to be able to borrow funds through the America, uh, bond, uh, America Build program. It ended up uh, for this construction project with Whiting Hall and also with the HLC, uh, ended up saving us about three quarters of a million dollars with the way that we were able to go out and actually negotiate rates. And uh, so we're very uh, thankful that this came along and it's one of the first real impacts that we've seen at JCC for uh, cost savings as we, uh, as we move forward. So we'll continue to monitor this a bit and see how it, how it shakes out. There are different uh, variances. Once it gets through the committee process, we'll see what this eventually looks like. But uh, it is exciting to see uh, this kind of a particular focus both at the state level and the federal level about putting people back to work. AGI and SAFRA, we're still waiting on this. Uh, there was a, uh, a conversation uh, with Arnie Duncan here, our Secretary of Education, at the federal level not long ago, in fact last week, uh, and some recent articles in the Chronicle of Higher Education about how things are moving along. A number of changes that uh, we're beginning to see is there doesn't seem to be, as we look at uh, uh, putting a budget together at the federal level, there does not seem to be the level of support 
for the AGI program, the American Graduates Initiative, that there was previously. Recall that Obama announced this program at Macomb Community College last summer. I uh, was out there, uh, privileged to be a part of uh, that announcement. Um, sunny day fried my head while we waited for four hours for him to show up. Um, so it may be for not that I, uh, I got uh, sunburned that day. But uh, we continue to see that it has a heartbeat, but uh, I, we believe that it might be traded off. Uh, AGI funding was uh, a particular program of importance to us with regard to targeted funding for community colleges exclusively. And uh, the different grant forms that it would come uh, in included uh, support with uh, uh, tuition buy-downs. There was discussion about equipment, construction, uh, teacher support. There were lots of elements that were specifically targeted toward community colleges. Again, with the idea of having more people graduate from a community college, uh, the president himself acknowledged that 95% uh, of all new jobs are going to require some kind of a post-secondary credential. And looking at the nation's community college as the primary vehicle for which that would be achieved. So uh, we are a little concerned about what that means. Uh, um, SAFRA will likely still go through as part of the overall omnibus package at the, at the federal level. Uh, we are uh, trying to keep a finger in the dam, so to speak, and keep AGI part of that. We've spent a lot of time lobbying for that at the federal level uh, and individual community colleges, including this one, trying to ensure that that would happen. Uh, but it's uh, looking in, in doubt right now. Uh, closer to home here, uh, the governor's rec uh, came out uh, not long ago, and of course we're all reacting to what that means. A little closer to home, it has a number of significant uh, impacts, and let me just kind of tick them off for you. Uh, the first and probably the most concerning is that though the governor's rec uh, was balanced, it included over a half a billion dollars uh, in additional stimulus extensions to be able to satisfy and actually put a balanced budget together. Uh, the Obama administration has not signaled whether there will be any uh, stimulus funds that would be extended or how much would be there if the extension is available. So number one, the first bullet there uh, is a big if, uh, being able to fill that kind of a hole. And there's no other place to go other than additional cuts or new revenue. And uh, depending upon your political party, you may not be interested in looking at um, additional revenues, i.e. taxes. Uh, to be able to help uh, uh, satisfy the budget requirements uh, in order to have a, a, a um, uh, congressional, or excuse me, a legislatively required balanced budget. So we'll uh, we'll monitor that one here. Uh, I know the governor's working really hard and trying to get an extension, but we'll see where that goes. Uh, the problems that we face now and the way that they're spinning their way through the House and Senate will be exacerbated further if we have to find another half billion dollars. So that's the the first concern. Uh, as I have talked with uh, heads of uh, appropriations committees on both the House and Senate side and also the appropriations committee chairs for community college subcommittees, uh, the conversation right now is about taking care of, uh, of the current budget. And the conversation sounds something like 5% across the board. However, the Senate uh, last week, last Thursday, uh, the sub Senate subcommittee actually came out and recommended a 3.1% reduction across all of higher education, so community colleges and uh, our baccalaureate grounding counterparts. So uh, to put that in dollars for you, uh, it's pretty close to uh, $400,000 for Jackson Community College at the 3.1% level. So uh, it's not a matter of not getting cut. Those days are long over. We, we were blessed not to be cut uh, this current fiscal year, uh, but the, uh, the coming year uh, and perhaps even the end of this year, we're going to see a cut. And, uh, uh, the discussions sound like uh, as much as 3.1% uh, before the end of this fiscal year, uh, and as much uh, some conversations go as high as 20% in state aid reductions. Uh, for us, with about 11 million five, you can do the math, uh, you understand what the, the severity of the cuts are going to be. The good news is that um, we have been ramping up a little bit for some of this cut, but not all of what the maximum could be. So uh, we're contemplating that as we set budget targets here at JCC with regard to tuition and other revenue streams and billing contact hours and enrollment, those kinds of things. Uh, we'll get that.